So I have some question from uh, our former user. Um, what protocols have you introduced in ASMET for patient safety and to deal with the COVID-19 emergency? <laughs> yes, it's obvious that we have to take an action and we have to get used to under protection protocols against the coronavirus. Uh, I, I prepared a video, uh, Bola. I, I, I will send it today. If possible, I want you to share it also uh, with my patients. Uh, first of all, Asmet is a hosp not a hospital. We, ha we have a medical center, so this place is just uh, focusing on hair transplantation, nothing else. Uh, so the, the patients who are visiting us is just uh, interested with hair transplantation. And of course, uh, for, we, we started to make a regular test uh, against the coronavirus with all my stuff. Uh, and also we will repeat it for the, all the patients who will come to us met uh, one day before the surgery. We will test everybody and it will not be possible to find anybody inside the clinic without test. And, you know, the conditions of the clinic, uh, I work hard to keep it high. So they will have their separated areas. They have their private rooms. They don't have, they can keep their social medias. They don't have to order from outside. Uh, we have an exclusive kitchen and then we will cook them and we will serve in a most hygienic way. Uh, and I think the most important thing, the surgery rooms, uh, because uh, in the entrance of the clinic, we have sterilization system and we are checking every patient, uh, the thermite camera system. And when they get entrance, we will uh, make their coronavirus tests. And then uh, we will give them a private uh, room and uh, we will isolate them. Uh, so, and in the surgery room, which is more important because we will spend, they will spend six hours in the same room with the team, with the surgery team. Uh, so this is the most important uh, part. Uh, all, all, all our uh, surgery rooms uh, is sterilized with ultraviolet system during the night. Mm -hmm. But uh, during the surgery, we have HEPA filter system. HEPA filter system is a special filtering system. It's taking fresh air, filtering from the pollution, virus, and bacteria. And there are some vacuum systems downstairs. And every two minutes, all the air of the room is changing and sterilized and with fresh air. So I think uh, there are only a few uh, clinics in the world can do the same system during the surgery. Well, excellent. <laughs> Everything sounds perfect for the patient, so they will be very safe. Yeah, so, well, I will share a video and uh, for, for more details. Yeah, I've seen that for a limited time there are some special offers at ASMED. Do you want to tell something more about that, about the doctor working with you and everything else? Yeah, yeah. and uh, the, in, in this period, uh, till the end of the August, uh, he, Probably we have we will have limited patients, and it's you know it's hard to stay at home. I started to talk with the walls while waiting to <laughs> pass the period. So uh, now we started. I started online consultations, and uh, we focus more in the local market because you know ninety five percent of my patients from coming abroad from U.S., Europe, everywhere, and so. We we reduced the prices we we for a limited period till the end of August because uh, the passing period will be hard also for everybody and people who 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 stay at home they don't have real uh, enough uh, salary to pay high salaries to pay high prices so we reduce the prices uh, I reduce my prices 1.5 euro per graft and as my team uh, we reduce the prices one euro per graft uh, so. At least for, for the passing uh, period, I, I just want to uh, keep my position. I'm not planning to get money. I'm just trying to survive for, for the June, July, and August period. Wow, that's a great, a great deal for the patient, and I'm sure they will appreciate that. So I hope so. <laughs> so let's start with some technical questions from forum members. Mm. How do you manage the situation when you have a young patient with some diffused thinning, but mm -hmm. also with a good donor area? Do you recommend surgery or you suggest him to continue with the 
medical therapy or which is your strategy in this kind of situation? Uh, a young patient with me at right donor area and uh, my action and according to that. Is that the question? No, the question is if you have a patient with a good donor area but a diffuse thinning all over the scalp. So in, in, is, is a young patient, let's say 25, 26. So you don't know how will be the future situation on the recipient. So in this case, do you recommend surgery? Or you say, okay, let's see and wait. You, you take the, the medicine and see how it works. Yep. Uh, Bola, normally, uh, I think 10, 12 years ago, I, was, I have some uh, limits for the age. And I was not operating the patients who were uh, less than 25 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, by time, I, I changed my strategy about that because I am checking the donor capacity and I am checking the miniaturization rate in the different parts of the recipient area. Uh, you know, we have a scanning system, robotic scanning system now. I can use it more effectively. So I am checking the, for example, during that scanning system, it's, che it's checking the caliber of the hair. And depending the color, carbon caliber of the hair, we have a chance to get the real telogen rate and miniaturization rate. So if the miniaturization rate is mostly more than 30% of the original hair, so I can imagine that uh, it's, he, will, he will going to lose that part. And I'm trying to catch anybody from his family who has a genetically connection about the hair loss. So with this type of hair loss, I'm deciding sometimes, in some cases, if the patient accepts the uh, try medication finasteride, I, I sometimes prefer to go with that and try to get a better uh, uh, density and better, uh, mostly better caliber of the hair. And to prevent the shock loss, sometimes I, I, I just I offer them uh, to start take medication. And after a while, Maybe I, according to the reaction, because some patients are reacting a lot, they don't want to take the medication. And in these cases, sometimes I just want to see, for example, can you send me the photos after six months uh, so I can, I can see the speed of your hair loss? Uh, but I'm not, I, I'm not uh, targeting any age, depending to his uh, hair loss pattern, if it is stabilized or if I can, I can uh, estimate his a possible hair loss in the future, and if the donor capacity is available to cover it, uh, I, from my side, I don't need to wait uh, till any age. Uh, but mostly, uh, I, I try medication as a first step. Perfect. Uh, let me explain one thing to our Italian visitors. Um, ragazzi, tradurrò uh, la traduzione sarà fatta dopo che avremo fatto il video. Ok, quindi non vi preoccupate, tutto sarà tradotto in italiano. Yeah, I'm explaining that I'm going to translate our answer and question later, okay? Much better. Yeah. Yes, so a new question. Some of your colleagues use BHT from beard and body, especially in patients with poor donor area, while others don't consider it like a valid option. What is yeah. your opinion on, on that? Paula, you know my style. Uh, I care uh, natural looking more than a density. First of all, I want to mention that. And the beard has some advantage because you are increasing your capacity, donor capacity, by using beard or body hair. But the problem with beard uh, is thicker than the original hair. Mm -hmm. And second problem, most of them, total of them, is single. And the third problem, uh, they are not growing as fast as the original hair. So it's, with a, uh, it's a problem for the patient who transplanted. So in these cases, I, 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 I'm not fan of body hair uh, because I, be, I believe that with a good donor management and with a homogenization system, uh, if, you, if, you, if you are not aggressive with the front line and if you balance the expectation of the patient, to use the donor area is the best solution. But I respect who perform body hair and sometimes may be a good option, but not my style. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk uh, uh, about density. You know, especially Italian and Spanish look at 
want it very dense. I'm sure <laughs> you find a lot of patients asking, I, I want the maximum density. So Everybody. I yeah. don't see who wants minimum density. <laughs> yeah. So some doctors prefer to split in two sessions to achieve high density, while others believe that it's possible to perform a uh, dense pack in a single session. Uh, what's your, your opinion on that? And if the use of the keep your placer help you to maximize the, the density? Uh, Bola, first of all, uh, hair, hair restoration has limits. We are the artist who creates an illusion. So everybody knows that it's not possible to get the original density. This is reality. Uh, but it's not necessary to get the original density. For example, the original density is like uh, his 70 per square centimeter follicular rate. You don't have to catch it. If you can pass over 45, 46, depending on the thickness of the hair, sometimes you are getting an illusion that it looks like the original density, but it is not. So the main idea in hair restoration is to get a natural looking and looks like an original density. It's not necessary to be the original density. In some cases, uh, it's possible in some cases. Which cases, for example, if you have a high caliber, if you have a low contrast between skin and the hair, and if you have a good hypergraft uh, averages, and the caliber is uh, higher than uh, for, for a good coverage, and if you have a re good regrowth rate uh, at the same time, because uh, people think that I go to the famous doctor and I pay, pay that money, and then I will. I have to get the best density, but there are many factors that we cannot control. This is a human, human body. Many things that we don't know related with the regrowth rate. Uh, so it's blood circulation, smoking, uh, skin reaction. Many things that we cannot control. Also, and some factors we really don't know. What is the reason of the this patient is getting higher regrowth rate and the other one is low, lower regrowth rate? So we are just trying to do our best. So depending, for example, there are some limits in hair restoration. If the caliber of the hair of the patient is like 50 micro, and if hair per graft average is average 1.9 or 2.1, in these cases, whatever you do, what density you create, it's not possible to get the original density. But on the other hand, another patient who has uh, 2.4 hair per graft average with the caliber of uh, 65 micron and with a very good color contrast, in these cases, if you have a very good donor uh, regrowth rate, uh, in one case, you can cover it. So what I am doing, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with my patient, I'm trying to get their expectation, and I'm trying to tell the reality of their restoration. It's not related. You say that if the keep it help you to improve the density. Yes, but keep, uh, keep is helping me uh, to place the graft uh, with less damage because uh, you know the I, I, I have assistants I'm working with them so we are placing uh, in, on the same patient 2,500 grafts so it's not possible to keep the same concentration whatever you do when you handle it with a pen set it's hard but when you uh, place them by using a safe system so even the first graft and even the last graft uh, we are protecting it from uh, handling it harder and placing, and sometimes they are curving. So uh, the keep, yes, the keep helped me for a better regrowth rate. But in the beginning of the keep, also we have some difficulties. Uh, so because you are changing a system, and that period is a passing zone, and sometimes I change the caliber of the keep, I change the steel thickness of the keep. When I make it so thin, it's easily broken. Many surgeons cannot adapt it. They say it's too fragile. And also the direction when you are using a full set to give the direction is easier, but when you use keep, it will be a bit harder. You had you need a practice. So for the passing zone, yes, I had some difficulties, but at the final, I'm very happy with the results of the keep. At, as for example, at the last one and a half year, I'm getting much much better than this in the first front line. But I'm repeating, we are not a magician. In some cases, whatever you do, it's not possible to get the best dance. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's something the patient needs to really understand sometimes. So I hope, I hope my Italian patients, can, can you translate? Because it's important this part. Okay, <laughs> sì. <laughs> L'ultima frase che ha detto il dottore è secondo lui molto importante. 
grazie all'utilizzo del KIP eh, negli ultimi anni e a alcune modifiche che hanno effettuato con l'esperienza che hanno acquisito è possibile ottenere degli ottimi risultati a livello di densità però eh, va sempre ricordato che eh, il trapianto è un'illusione quindi un'illusione di copertura un'illusione di densità e solo in pochissimi casi selezionati si può raggiungere una densità altissima simile a quella dell'indigine però non sempre quindi è importante avere delle aspettative realistiche ok <laughs> Let's go with the next question. Oh, uh, so we know that the, the black market is a serious problem. Uh, what should patients be careful about and what are the risks of a poorly executed FUE? Because sometimes people think that FUE is easy and everybody can do it. So can you explain us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Uh, I just want to make a summary from Turkey. Uh, you know that uh, Turkey, uh, many patients are coming to Turkey all around the world because of uh, very acceptable prices. Uh, uh, but the problem here is uh, the hospitals are renting their rooms for hair, hair restoration. So what happens? Uh, I am a group of technicians that I created a website and with a very, very acceptable price, I'm making, I'm using some result photos. Most of them are stealing from other doctors. Uh, and on the other hand, every, every, every clinic has one, two, three good cases. So uh, when they are sharing these photos are, and with a very, very acceptable prices, people are visiting and believing these clinics and visiting And when they see the hospital, they say that, wow, this is a respectful place because in the website they use the hospital photos, but the hospital owner uh, doesn't know who is operating there. And uh, all the team, what they are doing, there are many WhatsApp groups in Turkey. Many, many uh, nurses and technicians are finding job. And for example, uh, they are sending a message, okay, I find a patient, I need uh, two, one extractor, two uh, placer, And what is the money, uh, 300, 200, whatever, they are negotiated and they are going there. Nobody knows each other. Probably the first time they are coming together. Uh, so they are operating and when the patient is not happy, uh, they, they cannot find anybody who is responsible from, because hospital is not taking the responsibility because hospitals say that I went to them. But it's, the website is all, already closed. And, and There is a big mistake, I just want to warn. People are thinking that, okay, this is a very acceptable price. If they are not growing, who cares? We will do, and then if we are not happy, we, are, we go to a better doctor and we will fix it. But it's not working like that. Because uh, if they, it's not possible to find the same donor area because they are using, and when the, when the result is unacceptable, really it's very, very hard to fix the result and to make it because of the direction you cannot extract these graphs. So, of course, price is the important thing and people are comparing the prices. So I, I prefer, I just want my Italian patients, uh, please be careful about that. You need uh, very good references and you, you, don't, you don't believe on uh, billboards or other things, you have to know that uh, you will be a perfect evaluation. You should be evaluated perfectly. You should, for example, by sending a photo or just looking at the head without any examination, without any calculation, uh, it's not possible to get up any information about the donor management, homogenization. Uh, so you feel it. And, Uh, some people who cheated, I, uh, it's okay, I can accept that. But there are some group who doesn't care. They say that it's cheap, I will go another one and I will fix it. But it's not working like that. It's really hard because I'm in Turkey. All my time is spending to fix many cases here, more than any, any surgeon. And there is no any other surgeon in the world who is suffering more than me because of the black market. Because near to my clinic, there are many 500, 600, dollar clinics all around my clinic. So I am in a competition with them more than anybody. Uh, some, uh, uh, on the other hand, some people are happy from uh, my colleagues that there is there's this corona uh, virus problem, so nobody's coming to Turkey. <laughs> no, we are not. We are not. 
I know, I know, Your Honor. So now, uh, oh, the most important question, the one that probably you heard a lot of time, are the ear transplant results permanent? Because some patients mm. complain about the loss of the transplanted ear after a few years. I hope they are permanent because all my ear are transplanted. So <laughs> how do you explain it? But first of all, not only hair transplantation, the, all the surgical procedures in the world is just a stealing time from life. If you have a 10 years successful surgery, you are lucky. The surgeon did a good thing. And we are taking from donor area some graft and placing in the recipient area. And if we have a chance to survive till 120 years, we will see that there is no donor area. Nobody has real donor area. So first of all, you should know that there is no permanent donor area. The donor area, when I am, okay, I have a hair in my donor area, but not the same density and not the same thickness when I was 20 years old or 25 years old. I am also losing from the safe donor area every year. So uh, you are taking the follicles from the donor area, some of them triple, some of them doubles, one of them, of the triple is miniaturized. And we are placing it. Some of them are growing, mostly 90% regrowth rate. But it doesn't mean that they will survive forever. With the medications that you take, like finasteride, uh, it helps the time that you, but I am sure about that. In every 10 years, 15% of the transplanted graft also will fall. And if you have, if you are at the same time, if you are losing your original hair in the recipient area and some of the transplanted graft, they fall down, not all of them, maybe 10%, maybe 7%, maybe 5%, but I'm sure that you are, we are all the transplanted, uh, we are losing some of the transplanted graft because we are placing, we are getting a good regrowth. What, what is it? 90, 93, 95. Okay, very good number, but by time, also you will start to lose it. So this is not something, gentlemen, this is not something that you pay the money and everything will be okay. No, the surgeon is trying to give his best because he's trying to keep his reputation. He wants to give everybody best result, but there are some things that it's not possible to control every step. Even you have a perfect result, it doesn't mean that for the lifetime you will keep it. So try to understand that this is not something that you are paying and we are selling the hair. This is something that you are paying and we are giving you our experience. Okay. Do you think that uh, following a medical treatment, for example, with finasteride, helps to maintain the, the result over time or? Yes. In, 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 yes. Uh, in, if... Uh, Mostly related with the uh, miniaturization rate and the telogen rate is also related with that. Uh, but after the surgery, uh, if if the, yeah, it's, it's, it's like this. Uh, we, 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 DHT, the testosterone, we are losing the density, like 60 micron, 50 micron, 4, 30, 20. If we, catch, if we have a ch chance to catch the around 30 micron, then <clears throat> finasteride helps them to get a thicker again. It's not uh, some. It's finasteride is not something that uh, you are. Uh, you have deep follicles growing. It, it's just uh, makes thicker the miniaturized hair back again. So, if you take the pills and if you are lucky and if you don't have any side effect and if the medication works for you, then it started to get thicker again. But when you stop taking it, uh, vice versa, uh, it's slightly getting thinner again, and the process begins. So my patients are asking me, doctor, I don't want to use finasteride, uh, but you recommend only one year. Why? Uh, many, uh, some reasons. First of all, if you have a chance to start, I believe that if you have a chance to start medication a bit more like one month before the surgery, this, is, this will make your miniaturized hair slightly, uh, slightly stronger and uh, helps me, if, if possible, shock loss possible. It happens, I believe that. And on the second hand, uh, when, when you take a follicle from the donor area, uh, all the follicles is triple, quadruple, double, 
in some of them, we are checking under microscope, we are catching the miniaturization and telogen rate. And if the patient has more miniaturization, uh, even the follicles from the donor area, when you place them, they are so fragile. And if the patient is under medication, your regrowth rate is two, three percentage better. But after one year, he stopped it. Okay, he stopped it. And what will happen? Uh, so what we gain, we started to lose. Uh, but at least for that period, one year period, the, 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 the thinner one gets a little bit thicker. And then even you stop it, you gain time because it takes time to make to come to the same level again. But uh, it's not a permanent solution, of course, again. When you stop it, you are losing it, but you still, you, we are still in a time from life again, one year more. Okay, okay. So <clears throat> do you want to send a message to all your former and future Italian patients? And another question is, why a patient should choose uh, ASMED for their future surgeries? First of all, uh, I just want to start with why ASMED. Uh, you know that uh, ASMED uh, is, is a system. It's a, it's a system clinic and we are only using manual punch. Why manual punch? Manual punch and motorized punch is when you compare the graph survival is not changing so much. But the donor management <clears throat> is much better with the manual punch because by the manual punch, even it takes harder to extract, you have a chance to manipulate according, depending the follicle. And then uh, manual punch is, I think, one of the most important things uh, because I can do two-day surgery in one day by using motorized system. But for the manual system, I need two days in many cases. And this is one of the reasons. The second reason Uh, we care about the donor management uh, for much, uh, I believe that, by using the mathematical system and we are trying to get a, a, a systemic teamwork here. People are asking me why you are not extracting all the grafts, why you are not placing, because everybody wants me to do everything. But believe me, I believe that this is the best way I can do. If you want a good result and I, I need my system, Uh, because I extract all the grafts, uh, believe me that it will not be the same quality because uh, I have a limited age, I have a limited concentration, but if you are changing the team, because hair transplantation is a team job, so I believe uh, I, I, I care the quality, that is the reason I choose that system. That's the only thing for the explanation, because I care and I, I am working in the best way that I believe and trying to give the best to my patients. And after this Uh, corona days, uh, there's another reason that, uh, as, as I explained, we have a high sterilization conditions, uh, probably one of the safest places us meant to visit because it shows us that this coronavirus problem will take maybe more, more than one year. So when the flight will open, uh, we are expecting all of you. And for Italy and Italian patients, mm -hmm. you know, Turkey is the capital city of hair transplantation. Everybody is coming to Turkey for the operation. But the first patient who came to Turkey, you know, Italians. Because <laughs> before all these things, I, I, I am the doctor who, who, who invited the foreign patients to Turkey as the first time. And nobody knows Turkey as a hair transplantation center. It started with Osmet. And yeah. who came first? Italians. Yeah. And so... Italian has another place in my heart, and I like your country, I like your culture, I'm praying for Italy with the fight with the coronavirus, uh, and I just wanted to say that please keep safe and take care of yourself, maybe more than before. Okay. Okay, Dr. Koray, thank you very much for your time and this interview, and... Uh, Arrivederci from, the, from Italy. Bolo, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm very happy. Thank you. Hope to see you Hope soon. Hope to see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.